My name is Savio Akan. I work as an executive director with the Community Policing Partners, Compact. Compact is a, a non-governmental human rights organization based in Akwa Ibom State, the Niger Delta region of Nigeria. And we are specifically into uh, building uh, bridges between uh, law enforcement agencies and the, the community members we are supposed to save using the strategy of uh, knowing and showing. So that's what we do. Um, basically, the truth is that the human rights situation, as far as law enforcement is concerned in Nigeria, is nothing to write home about. This is because um, the different security agencies that are supposed to be protectors of human rights and um, promoters of human rights as well are um, extremely ignorant of their responsibility in relation to existing laws that is supposed to aid and abet uh, effective um, uh, promotion and protections of human rights. Um, a, a, an example to that is um, uh, before now, uh, the human rights system in Nigeria, well, I will say basically we rely on the provisions of Chapter 4 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. But in 2015, we have the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, which come up with a lot of innovations that helps in ensuring uh, speedy dispensation of justice and adequate protections of human rights. But unfortunately, as we speak, um, most of the agencies, because this law applies especially to federal agencies like the police, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the Copyright Commission, and other law enforcement agencies at the federal level. Very unfortunately, the um, majority of the personnel, especially those at the ranks and fires who are having the daily contact between the people in the lawful discharge of our duty are not too conversant of the provisions of this act, let alone putting its innovations into practice. So that has put the human rights system in the country in regard to law enforcement agency at an impunious level because the protectors of rights sees, uh, capitalizes on the ignorance of the people to you know, perpetrate injustice uh, with impunity. Um, the situation has been with us um, over time. Uh, it's a kind of like gradually gaining improvement as a result of the, the advocacy effort of different human rights and civil society groups in the country. But very unfortunately, the truth has to be understood that the foundation of uh, most African society, Nigeria not an exception, has been on morality, not on legality. So when you are now trying to introduce legality, Legality is meeting with um, uh, a system whereby might is unnecessarily glorified as rights. And this has become a challenge to effective law enforcement in relationship to uh, human rights. Because in, a, in a, a functional democracy, the law enforcement agencies, or let me say the security forces, depends on public corporations and uh, uh, partnerships to carry out their duties effectively. But in a situation like Nigeria, I can tell you that the Nigerian security architecture has been seriously and completely alienated from the people they are supposed to serve. And the reason for this is because there has been this high-handedness, the, the, the contact situation between the citizens and these different law enforcement agencies is always involuntary. And this happened only in the course of their law enforcement duties. Which study has proved that when these agencies concentrate so much on law enforcement, it affects the relationship problem between them and their host communities because they are supposed to police their respective host communities by their own consent, not by cohesion, which is the reason why we are having all these things now. So this long period of cohesive um, provisions of law enforcement services that is not qualitative, that lacks accountability, and that cannot be transparently, you know, uh, adjudged by the people, has been the reason why this has been with us in Nigeria, even up to now. Unfortunately, even the advent of democracy in 1999, which to me was more or less like a return to an elective civilian, co-military 
personnel into offices. Uh, the, the, the expectation of Nigeria was that this would put an end to all those um, impunity, but it is not because the ignorance has eaten deep into the societal fabric, and it has to, you know, be gradually uh, removed uh, over time based on um, uh, awareness and uh, sensitization, which is what civil society groups are doing. One other thing we do at Compact is that we receive complaints from members of the public who has been so naive, who have been so intimidated by their own perception on going to these security agencies to make their complaints. So if they have, and another thing is that there has been these uh, cases of the inability of the security agencies or the law enforcement agency to manage credible information volunteered by the public at their disposal for effective, proactive, uh, you know, crime preventions and control. So we still have a system whereby the policing of the society is reactive. So what we do at Compact, at first instance, is that members of the public, especially at the community level, come to Compact, they give us this information. We now manage this information as, as a memo to the different law enforcement agencies without dis disclosing the source of the information if it's something that had to be very critical. But the source of information is known to us. So when the we also partner these agencies to ensure that these informations are properly managed without any form of reprisal to the source of information. So this over time, in our 16 years of existence, has helped to build public confidence on the different agencies. Because at the end of the day, the person who volunteered this information has found out that um, he has not been wished by whoever he volunteered the information against. And as, at the other time, the police, or for example, are also acting on that information proactively to nip in the bud uh, the, what would have happened if that information was not volunteered. Secondly, we carry out awareness and sensitization. And most of this awareness and sensitization, we do it in collaboration with the agencies and ensure that the community members have adequate representation, including women and youth. So issues that are germane, that are so important to the community are always topic for discussion. For example, bail. Bail in Nigeria, by law, is supposed to be free. But unfortunately, the Nigerian police, for example, has been, uh, over time, collecting money from members of the public, which is one of the reasons why public does not trust them. Because you go to the station, you see it is boldly written, bail is free. For people are paying exorbitantly to get their loved one released. But what is, the, what is the motivating factor for them to be collecting this money? The reason is because of impatience and ignorance of relatives of these suspects, who will now, based on under what we could call um, uh, family morality, now go to the police and say, look, um, in, in the history of our family line, nobody has slept in police cells, so we wouldn't want this one to sleep in the police cell. How much can we pay so that this one will not sleep in the police cell? And police will capitalize on that impatience and charge them an exorbitant amount of money, even beyond their yearly income. So that's what we do at Compact. And we have a, an operating slogan that we say, globalizing the local and localizing the global. So most of what we do in this case, those best practices that are elsewhere in the international community, we try to trickle it down to the rural communities. And we also network with international partners to ensure that they also advise us and guide us on how best we can replicate best practice at our community level. So that's what we do at Compact. Of course, the number one constraint is um, one, resistant to change by members of the security forces. As a result of the grief they have due to what they have been getting from these uh, um, illicit and uh, corrupt uh, uh, law enforcement practices, it has become a serious challenge it has become a very serious challenge getting the people to first and foremost understand that this can be done in the other way around. And uh, apart from that, um, the system is also not encouraging the law enforcement agents to do the right thing. It is very shameful that in a country like Nigeria, you give somebody an AK-47 well loaded, and this person, after 30 days, does not even receive his salary. So what do we do? What will he do? He depend, his welfare is dependent on the, the poor masses that are applying the roads where such a person is posted on duty. So this has also become a serious challenge into, uh, into our work. Coupled with ignorance, ignorance to the fact that the majority of Nigerians look at human rights from the perspective of absolute rights, 
But we try to let them understand that every right goes with a responsibility. The only thing that can make you to enjoy your rights freely is when you have fulfilled your responsibility as a citizen. And this is where we are getting the challenge. And when we talk about citizens, even members of the law enforcement agencies are also citizens. So they should fulfill their responsibility and expect to get their right from government. And then as a result of the fact that 85% of Nigerians does not fulfill your, their responsibilities as expected of them in line with civil obligation, it becomes difficult to hold government accountable for any wrongdoing, including the agencies. So these are challenges. Um, we can even talk about funding. Funding could be a challenge, but to me, I sometimes have this uh, belief that uh, we must not always depend on donor support um, uh, or international partner support to carry out human rights advocacy that have to do with our people. Because if you are depending on donor support, your, your advocacy effort will be delegated by the agreement you sign. So this will not even allow you a vast area of land to be able to tell the people exactly what is their problem because you have to be delegated by where you get the money from. So I'm saying that the, for everybody supposed to walk, wake up, protection of human rights is the responsibility of everybody, irrespective of whether there is funding support or not. Um, the recent, one of the recent cases that we have worked on is a situation whereby people who make complaints at divisional commands, uh, when they happen to see that the division is about to do justice uh, against their will, they will run to state commands and write those petitions against the divisional commands. And the state commands, based on the fact that some person will just collect money, get the petition approved, will not cause for the matter to be taken away from the area where the suspect is well known. And um, we wrote a petition against that to the authority and, and the media carry was even given a front page publication in Nigeria here that it is not fair when somebody is living in community A and because of the fact that he's sensing that the lies he told against his uh, uh, fellow citizen is not going to work out in a particular divisional command, he will run to state command, pay some money and have the petition or the case, case file transferred to the uh, state where they can sometimes buy out justice because they have money more than the person they were dealing with at the rural area. This is seriously unacceptable. And we have demanded the police authority in Nigeria to put a stop that instead of matters being transferred from local divisional command to state command, it should even be transferred from the state command to local division where the individual is based. That is one thing that we have taken seriously. And um, this will also uh, help in uh, promoting um, uh, witness protection. Because where you are being interviewed, interrogated within an environment that you are known to the officers and members of the community, people who are coming to testify against you are not people that uh, we are looking for. It's people that knows you very well right from birth. So it's not going to be that, okay, somebody is being paid to testify against me. This one will be that my brother is testifying against me based on my character. And our Nigerian law allows for character evidence. Number one. People should be made to understand that every right goes with responsibilities. And uh, you know, um, let me just take us slightly back to memory lane. In the military era in Nigeria, human rights advocacy and uh, struggles were kind of like uh, antagonizing the government. And because everybody, every human rights crusaders and activists were working hard to get the military out of power. So Nigeria has grown up with that mentality, looking at human rights as an antagonism to government. Human rights is not supposed to be an antagonism to government. It's supposed to be a complementarity of everything that the government is doing. It's supposed to be partnership to solve a problem. So people should move away from the mentality of antagonizing government. Rather, we should engage with government, constructively criticize where they are doing, where they are doing bad, and appraise them where they are doing good, and encourage best practice in the provisions of quality, transparent, and accountable services to the people. Because all the persons, for example, the Nigerian police is, if you look at the function of the Nigerian police as spelled out in the Colonial Police Act of 1950-something, uh, uh, if the entire function is about protection of human rights. So, but when the police are protecting this human right with, with greed, they are no sense of patriotism because people does not see responsibility attached to every right. It makes might to become right. So we should, Nigerians should be sensitized to move away from that. Again, I am of the opinion that the recall process in our electoral law should be, you know, uh, the constitution should be amended 
to include the recall process under Chapter 4 of the Constitution to become a fundamental right of the citizens, which can be challenged as a group right. Because the recall process of our elected representative is so cumbersome in such a way that it becomes very difficult that when somebody is not uh, acting or performing based on the dictate of uh, uh, why he was elected into that office, you cannot even bring him back. And you see people sitting in office uh, perpetrating injustice with impunity and nothing is happening to them. The use of siren in Nigeria, to me, should be banned. No governor, nobody should use siren in this country. Because when a governor is in a traffic holdup, for two, 20 hours, five hours, six hours, like ordinary citizens, they will, they will know the importance of walking on the road so that we can have free flow of traffic. And in fact, uh, if it is possible, every government has in Nigeria should not have generator. So that when there is power outbreak for one week, a governor will feel the heat that ordinary citizens are feeling in this country. They should not be using power as a campaign, a campaign uh, tool to, 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 to fool us. And the international committees should prevail on our leaders because we are all, for example, Nigeria is a member of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth should look at the, what is good for members of other Commonwealth countries should be applicable to Nigeria citizens. And citizens should be made to know this and engage with the government, irrespective of who is in power. Without humans, they cannot be rights. And when there is no human right, they can never be government. I, I, I always ask people one, this one question. Who is government and where does he live? Now, government is a person, none of us know him physically. It's all of us that form part of government. Wherever you find yourself, you are government. It is our collective patriotism that forms a government. And by so doing, all human beings are supposed to be the key actors in the, in the, in the campaign and the crusade to ensure that respect for human rights is not taken to the, to the, to, is taken to the front burner, not relegated really to the background. Now, when you talk about governments, like I asked earlier, it's the, that question may sound somewhat rhetorical. Who is government? Where does it live? It is all of us, the citizens, that form the government. So it is our collective failure that forms the failure of government. That's my own belief. If I am now to drive on the road and I have all my papers intact, and a police officer who is on the road to check these papers is doing his job the way he's supposed to do, I don't think there will be any friction. But the issue is that how to, to what extent have we been able to exhibit our collective patriotism to the importance of making the world a better place for us to, to live and even for the benefit of the generation yet unborn? For example, I am working in an area that is hosting the extractive industry. You can now see that even the communities that are hosting these extractive industries are under, underdeveloped to the detriment of the citizens, making them to. And that is why you have high cases of unnecessary migration around the globe. Because people are not feeling the impact of the, the developmental uh, expectations of their respective communities. This is bad. So how, now, how do we link the relationship between human rights violations in terms of uh, developmental deficit to migration at the international level? It started from the community. And each of the countries of the world today are building borders, trying to check the influx of persons from developing countries into their own countries, which unfortunately cannot be controlled because of the, the, the influence of third parties that are helping to work, and they are working like a cartel. So that, these are the problems. This respect to human rights is be, should, be, should be looked at as a, a, group, a global crisis that all of us, all hands, must be on deck to solve so that we can stay in our respective environment, build an environment that we want, and then that will translate to the world that we want.